Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mario and in today's video we're going to talk about Maya UI and hotkeys. So actually how we can customize Maya UI and how we can also set up our own hotkeys. So uh, just a small reminder, uh, I did already a video like this, uh, I think a couple of years already. And because um, once you load in Maya, it's going to be something like this by default. So uh, in case you want to kind of like uh, declutter it all or kind of like remove a lot of the things that you do not use, especially if your modeling workflow is only focused on modeling and not an animation or any kind of like motion graphics, all that. So a lot of the things here you maybe also do not need. If you're focusing only on modeling, probably you do not need a lot of these things as well. So if we go under windows and UI elements, you're going to find that all of these UI elements that you see on the sides are located right here. So again, windows, UI elements. And if you go here to this little blue bar, you can undock it and simply uncheck everything you do not need. So shelf uh, status line, actually for now it can stay. I'm going to show you, you can turn that off otherwise if you want to. Uh, and also outliner, I have it undocked. And also Outliner, uh, I also have on a hotkey. So that means that if I want to call it off, uh, actually, if I want to kind of like bring it forward, I have it set on a hotkey so that I don't need to actually click on it uh, or have it here, let's say on the side toggle. So once you have your, let's say viewport already now kind of like decluttered, you can also simply here come to where it now says workspace general, just save current workspace as and give it a name. So the next time, once you load it up, it's going to be exact like this. Uh, now the next stop is going to be, let's say uh, the colors and also the grid. For example, grid, I also have on a hotkey. So as you noticed, a lot of the stuff here that I'm going to show, it's going to be so like every single thing that it's, I noticed that I'm using on a day-to-day -day basis in my modeling workflow. I set it on a hotkey simply to speed up uh, the workflow process. Uh, so um, here under uh, display grid, you're going to see I also have it set on hotkey, which is now Alt G. And if you uh, toggle this little uh, bar next to it, uh, here you can also set the color. So the colors, whatever you choose, simply hit apply. And that is going to be, let's say, your new, let's say, axis. Uh, grid lines and numbers, you can also uh, change if you want to. And the colors that you see here on the axis are going to be found on the windows, setting preferences, and then color settings. So now here's the deal. You can actually copy all of these colors. You can pause the video. You can copy all of these colors or you can simply use uh, the download that I provided here. Uh, the file is going to be called uh, 2024, which is for Maya 2024. So you can either just simply copy the contents of it and replace it uh, with your own. And that way you will get uh, every single setting that I have here in your own, uh, in your own kind of like a version of Maya. Uh, other way around is going to be if you just want to kind of like do it all manually. So you can pause the video here and you can just copy all of these colors if you really want to go uh, that direction. So these are kind of like the colors that, uh, that I'm using. Uh, same thing for inactive. So these are going to be kind of like those general, general colors, uh, components, and so on. Uh, now, important thing is if you're using these colors uh, presented here, uh, you're also going to inherit my hotkeys. So if you go to here uh, under Windows, Settings Preferences, and then Hotkey Editor, you also have my hotkey set. So hotkey set is going to be kind of like my hotkeys by default are going to be my default. So if you do not want to use my hotkeys, just make sure that under hotkey set, you choose Maya default. I'm gonna also show you how to set your own hotkeys, but just when we're talking about colors, I just wanna mention that as well, uh, real quick. So uh, still about colors. So uh, here under uh, general 3D views, uh, you can set the background color as you want to. And uh, my kind of aim is to kind of blend the top bar to the viewport. And this is, I think around 270, something like that. I leave it most of the time like this. Sometimes maybe a little bit darker, but brighter depends. Um, yeah, uh, another thing is about the colors is that uh, what I want to show still. Yeah, some of the colors uh, actually will not update if you change them uh, immediately. So let me just actually here switch back to my hotkeys real quick. So. Uh, some of the colors will not change automatically. So that means that you're going to probably need to either reset Maya or you're going to uh, load a new scene. Um, another thing I'm using is uh, an ambient occlusion or uh, anti-aliasing. Also, so just make sure this is kind of like toggled on. 
Uh, yeah, for the colors, for example, uh, UI elements, uh, settings preferences, and then color settings. If you go to active components, you're going to have here, for example, polygon edges, polygon faces, polygon vertices. So for example, blue, blue, and green. Um, and these correspond to the colors on the top. So if I would switch it, uh, let's say polygon faces to something like uh, this, you're going to see immediate kind of like action. If you don't see it immediately, that just simply means that you probably um, need to restart uh, restart Maya. So actually I wanted to change your polygon faces back to blue and there we go. All right, so that's uh, regarding the color. Uh, there's another thing, for example, multi-cut. Multi-cut is controlled differently. So multi-cut is going to be found here. So if you press uh, multi-cut, you're going to see that the uh, color settings are going to be right here. So color settings for multi-cut are actually found within the multi-cut uh, option right here. All right, so uh, let's talk about hotkeys. So hotkeys, uh, I'm using, basically like I mentioned, everything that I use on a sort of like day-to-day -day basis, I put everything on hotkey. From uh, calling the outliner, uh, from toggling the material. So if I show you the material, so assign material, and uh, let's say here, choose kind of darker, darker tone. And so the grid, I have it on hotkey. I have toggling the material, uh, toggling the basic material, and uh, wireframe and shaded. So I have all of this kind of like set on hotkey, which is basically these kind of like what you see here on the top. So default material on and off, wireframe and shaded on and off. So these two, I kind of put on a hotkey because if I'm working on something and if I want to have quickly see how it's looking, let's say without less of a um, shiny material or something, I can just quickly switch between all of these without clicking. And I like to kind of like minimize clicking around the viewport as much as I can. If we go on to Windows, Settings Preferences, and then Hotkey Editor. Uh, so just make sure you are in Maya default, and then you can go here on the duplicate and simply give it uh, any kind of name. Uh, and then now when you have Hotkey set to any kind of name you want, now you can actually set your own hotkey. So for example, I like to use uh, move. So move tool, I have it set to E, rotation I set to R, and scale I set to T. I will list every single hotkey that I'm using, which is not default uh, in the description down below if you wanna copy that as well. But like I mentioned, if you're using my file, you're probably gonna have also here my hotkey set as well. But if you wanna have your own, just make sure that you duplicate first and create your own. So for example, now uh, move, I wanna set to E. I wanna replace whatever it is, click somewhere away and then simply save, save and close. And if I now select an edge, uh, hit E, now I have that for the move. So same thing I wanna now do for the rotation. So settings preferences, hotkey editor, and then I'm gonna uh, rotation, rotation tool. It's going to be R, click away. Uh, actually not shift R, just R, uh, click away, save, uh, and then scale. Uh, so, okay, I still need to save that. Uh, all right, so here, scale. Uh, scale keys are going to be now uh, T. Again, just click away, save, and there we go. So now I have rotation on a hotkey and I have scale on a hotkey. Actually, I did not. Saying hotkey editor, uh, scale. I put scale keys and not scale tool. So scale tool needs to be T. Save, save and close. And now I should have scale. So the thing is uh, how to put uh, the, let's say the operations like this on a hotkey. So you just need to hover over it and it's gonna say use default material. So if you want to, then it will go under UI element, actually settings preferences, uh, hotkey editor, and then you're gonna use use default material. So uh, toggle use default material. So here it already is a hotkey, but you can add your own, let's say control five, click away, save, save and close. And then now you're gonna have control five, let's say use default material. So just whatever action you wanna do, just hover over it to see what's it's, uh, what's it's called. Let's say also wireframe unshaded. So you're gonna go into hotkey editor, set to wireframe unshaded, and that is how you're gonna uh, set your own hotkeys. So um, let's go back to hotkey editor, and I'm gonna go back to my hotkeys. And if you wanna delete those, simply go to this little kind of like uh, icon next to it and just delete. And there we go. So my hotkeys, save and close. 
All right, so uh, like I mentioned, everything that I'm using kind of like day to day, I used on a hotkey. Uh, if you want to, whatever uh, you notice that you're using the most often, you can just kind of like hotkey to uh, any kind of like keyboard command that you're most comfortable with. So if you are gaming a lot on, on uh, PC and you have kind of like muscle memory already to some, uh, some parts of the keyboard, you can uh, combine it as well. So I'm using a lot of alt combinations. So for example, alt five and six is going to be so sort of like combined to toggling wireframe unshaded here and uh, using default material. Same thing, let's say control five and or let's say uh, if I need a material, so let's say this is a cube or whatever. And if I need a material from that cube, I have that on alt U and that will just bring me kind of like the, my material. By default, you're gonna have control A, which brings attribute editor, but I just went a step further and added alt U to uh, bring those materials. So again, I don't need to uh, right click here, search where the material settings are. I just put it again, it's just so much quicker. Uh, all right, so let's now finally talk about the materials that I'm using. So uh, I'm gonna use one cube and let me use another cube. And also by default, uh, you're gonna have hotkey number three on your keyboard is going to be and hotkey. So one and three are going to be default for switching between subdivision preview and unsubdivision preview. And then page up and page down is going to be controlling how much um, subdivision preview division levels you want to have. So page up is going to increase this number, page down is going to decrease. Sometimes between two and three, this is kind of going to be golden mill that I'm usually going for. So again, three and then one more to get those pre uh, preview division levels up. All right, so applying material. So standard surface uh, I'm going to use here. Uh, I'm going to select this one. And so I'm using metalness all the way up for metals. Roughness around, let's say five those kind of like metallic looks or we can add more let's say divisions here so this is going to be kind of like that metallic uh, metallic look so let's say roughness 0.5 uh, and now as for color so color you can use by default uh, 0.8 0 0.7 really doesn't matter uh, what I do a lot is I add a little bit of kind of like bluish tone to it so it's going to be between 0.05 to 0 0.08 and what it does it kind of just brings a little bit slight contrast between the background and the foreground so that the material has just slight touch of color to it you can choose any color you want to so usually that would be kind of like either let's say warmer or colder tone at least in my case so but feel free to use any color you want to and even more subtle would be let's say 25 so just slight bit of touch color so that your eyes kind of like uh, distinct foreground from the background. Another thing is going to be another material, which is going to be so like um, with high roughness. So again, metalness all the way up and roughness also going to be kind of like 0 0.6, 8, 7, 8. And then color is going to be toned down. So just that I have contrast between two materials. So even sometimes, let's say if we detach here this part, I can add one material here, which is, let's say this one, and then on a same surface, uh, I can have two materials and kind of like have that, uh, so like contrast between the two, if let's say I'm not committed just yet to creating those panel breaks. Um, and the final thing here I would like to mention, uh, which is something that is very, very useful and that I would definitely recommend uh, using as well. And that is if you notice it here, that this line in the middle is much thicker. So uh, this uh, indicates that the connection here is broken so that this actually does not belong to the same object. Actually that this surface is no longer connected to the object. And sometimes that is going to be very, very useful if you notice, let's say that your mesh is broken and you're not sure where exactly and for what reason your mesh is broken. So if I detach this, you're gonna see your mesh is broken but if the line here is not that thick, you will not know what the reason behind it is. So um, on the windows, settings, preferences, preferences, you're gonna have here uh, polygons and highlight border edges. So if this is turned off, so let me just save this and add new cube. 
and add here the same thing. So detach components. I can still detach this, but you notice that the line is no longer as thick as this one. So now you're going to see if I detach also, let's say these two. Uh, so detach. They are detached, but they are not actually visible on a surface. So this is why it's really, really useful to have that on because you can always see uh, when your, let's say, mesh is broken or the, the edges are not connected. So under preferences, polygons, border edges on. And then edge width here, you can decide how thick or thin you actually want to have those. And yeah, that is that is basically all. So in short, uh, that is all kind of like the settings that I'm using. Final, final thing that I forgot to mention and I said that I will mention at the beginning and that is this at the beginning. Uh, if you go to your elements, uh, status shelf. So you can actually use shift M to hide it, uh, the panel, panel menu bar. Uh, you can use control M to hide the top menu bar, control M to bring it back and then shift control and M to um, hide the panel toolbar. So you can combine it all to basically hide everything that you do not need and then bring it back if you if you want to so again pretty pretty useful so yeah uh, more or less this is going to be it like i mentioned all the hotkeys that i'm using are on a list below this video i'm going to also provide you with uh, my so like the folder so if you want to just replace my folder with your folder with my folder and if you do not want to use my hotkeys also make sure settings preferences hotkey editor under hotkey set that you use my default ones or the ones that you decide to kind of like uh, check for yourself so yeah, uh, more or less, this is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'm going to see you next time.